Well, hello there. Uh, we are uh, doing an art review for one of our new characters that we're just going through the prototype stage with. Uh, his name is uh, Simuel. He's a shaman vampire hunter, and uh, the description for him is: a shaman turned vampire hunter discovered a ritual where he could be where he could burn the vampire in the dawn with an enchantment to preserve a vampire fang that can that when condensed. I don't know. Let's try that again. So when he, when he, <laughs> it's not the most well-written thing at this point, hence the weird voice. But basically, the sentiment is that um, it condenses the vampire's powers into experience, into and experiences into that fang, and then uh, in order to use and tap these vampire abilities, because Samuel isn't really a vampire, he's sort of like a, I don't know, he's almost like a thrall maybe. Um, uh, but uh, to utilize the, the powers of the Fang, uh, he has to insert them under his skin. So it's kind of kind of got this you know, Aboriginal kind of. Uh, I, like influence maybe um and then the other part of this is that the powers need blood to be utilized which makes the need to drink blood a necessity so it kind of turns him into this weird host because the vein the fangs um absorb that that blood that he imbi imbibes i guess but he's not a vampire but has a strong affinity for uh, vampirism and runs the risk of becoming a vampire so it's this interesting thing where he's still keeping a, a chunk of his humanity uh, and i also think of him as you know he's a vampire hunter so he hunts vampires by consuming you know um and taking the trophies from the victims uh and, you know i don't know if, if killing vampires are really victims because they're preferring me but whatever the morality aside so that's that's what we're doing this is uh, a general description that I, I gave to our wonderful artist dimitri um i've got zay on on this uh zoom call with me and so we're about ready to go through essentially um we had a very first version off the description here um, of, of Simuel. So you can kind of see him here. And we gave a round of feedback. I won't go too far into that. And the round of feedback came over in this. So we went a little crazy with kind of these like double legs and digigrade things and just trying to, you know, conjure the things that I, I get inspired by um, in my own. Yep, those are some ass champs, ass chaps, lots of uh, inspiration. Oh, it's see, see Zay there. Let's see. Pants legs strapped to the opening along the front. Yeah, okay, so I did say that, right? Uh, and just kind of getting this sense for um, what inspires me and what I want to draw inspiration for and what this character kind of looks like. And so we're going through that process now. So with that being said, we've got the latest version of Simuel here. So I was just going through and kind of drinking in the details. And with that, um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I like to basically let my artist know um the things that i like and don't like zay captures the notes for me because she is awesome thank you zay and uh we, we usually use 255 green because no one could ever mistake that for uh being a color <laughs> that you would ever use so um all pretty straightforward stuff and then um i try to uh change the opacity down to 30 percent so you can still see the details underneath and then, yeah, I just go down through, um, we, usually with, with my artists, um, it depends on how inspired he gets. We gave him a lot of feedback with that last round. And uh, we usually try to see what kind of gets remixed from that. And then we go over like um, things that we like, and then we kind of remix it together. Generally, the rule of thumb for the people out there doing art is whenever you're dealing with a client, generally give them three to five. Try not to give any more than that because it becomes, you know, it, it's... It's too much effort for your client to review all the details and variations. I don't personally mind taking extra variations because we have longer turnaround cycles of a few days between our concepts. But um, there's just a nice little thing, a nice little concept that if you if you tee up your your best, your medium, and your worst, like the things that kind of give it a nice variety, that helps the client really go through and and identify the things that they like style wise, and it helps you. Uh, get through your own iterations a little bit faster so that's a little tip i picked up from i don't know somewhere on the inner tubs but uh, as i'm directing some of these art pieces i think about that okay so let's see I'm just gonna go through he's got that weird smash nose thing i'm not a huge fan of that uh we definitely wanted to get all of these sort of like surgical incision lines which were pretty sweet um kind of just showing that you know he's really scarred right i also wanted to uh to really imbibe the concept that um here you can see the there's this like know, this, this is a place where blood gets inserted it's kind of this tubular thing that then goes into like he's got a little bandage thing here goes into his body to, to essentially basically uh turbocharge those those vamp fang powers right so it's kind of the, the thinking we had there um all right just looking at this guy here kind of like the i like the gear i want to take a look at the other permutations of gear here i 
I think that his digigrade legs these are meant to kind of pull back out and then to give him this this I don't know this, this weird mutation ability. Not a big fan of the the swingy flaps uh, so much on the sides there. He's got these and, and and in general we've got the digigrade legs here on the front and I think that makes him too alien. I want him to be more human, but definitely has these over the cover, over the duration i mean he's he's done this for a long time he's lived a long time so he's got some things that come from you know basically suckling off vamp vampiric abilities that have kind of transformed him over time so with that i'm gonna leave that guy for a minute and come back over and take a look at the rest of these guys what do we got here definitely like the nose much better in this case kind of got this melina thing going uh the teeth aren't i think the teeth are a little too crazy maybe and we'll see about that. So, but yeah, he's he's definitely running the risk of losing his humanity. So, I think I like the structure of the digigrade legs here, and uh, and with the the I know the the triple kind of claw gripper bits. So we'll come back to the boots in a bit here. And see what's up. Um, think as a one note is um, I don't think I see a case where we have um, with the exposed legs i think i'm missing essentially i want to see this kind of marred flesh a little bit more um that that is underneath the stitching it might get too too noisy it also might be that the cross stitching of the of the legs is not quite right so um hmm. okay. yeah i think in general let's try let's try a, a version of the pants that um that don't have the cross stitching Unless I see any cross stitch, I really like it. Didn't work out quite the way I was thinking. Dude, look at this thing. This weird bone boot thing is awesome. Come back to that in a second. Uh, hello, bone boot. Bone boot says yeah, yeah. And it was so he's got the bone boot in a couple places. Yeah, it's got this kind of like cool, like I don't know, like a kneecap kind of protector here. Um, and it's definitely got this kind of hard, hard material. And I like these clamps here. Pretty sweet. All right, bone boot's good. Um, uh, see about the, the fangs in the boots. I kind of like that. Uh, definitely these, I, I, I like how, I like how he's got, um, these, I like that the fingers are touching the ground here, um, in this particular pose. So I like that they're lower and not quite as, as hanging, but, um, I think they can be both. Uh, so just. I think probably for the main one of our main concept shots. Um, um, I like the the fingers having a light connection to the ground. What do we got here? Yeah, that bone boot's great. Let's see. So I'm looking at the vest now. So these vests. So we got the button up vest here. We got this kind of cross sash vest. That's a neat like design. And we got straps, huh? I I think, I think I'm kind of enjoying this uh this kind of cross design here because it has this kind of open torso. I think another note is, I mean, we're showing the fangs here. I guess the question is, is he juicing right now? So he's not juicing right now. Um, and I like that we have we have these fangs here, right? So it's cool. He's got these utility fangs, like kind of uh, on the gauntlet here, which is great. I like that we have them underneath showing here. Um, and they do definitely feel like vamp teeth um, to me, which is good. I guess the thing that I'm missing here is I can't tell where he'd be inserting these. And that's the thing is that probably the scar lines, we probably need to come back and do a design where he has a couple entry points um, that really uh, give us a sense of like, almost like an IV drip, like when we're, you know, and I think that's probably what we're missing. We've got kind of that, that concept here. Um, but I, I'm missing where he's maybe on the shoulder, the upper, um, the upper chest area. Um, also, I and mean, we've got these gauntlets here, so it's kind of tough to show. So we probably need a couple like scars that show like that he's been reinserting these things and they're not quite open wounds, but maybe they're, Maybe they're, they're like scar tissue that, uh, like puckered scar tissue that allows the, the fangs to kind of be inserted and taken out. Let's see. 
Oh wow, these little skull skull boots are kind of neat too. I think I like those better. Yeah. Hello, skull boot face. Uh, I think we're getting there with the skull. Um, I think it's a little too bulbous. I want to see the skull molded back up a little bit more towards the uh, the ankle, so it's like elongated. I think the the key here was that hey, the skull has been re reforged in you know with with metal. Um, and also a fun little tip is when you have uh, vampire fang tipped boots. I, I I also thought this could be part of his just weird like set of attacks where he can essentially gouge you with his uh you know with Ooh. his his boots and then the fangs do what fangs do and start absorbing the blood so it's a way of also giving him utility it's partially the same thing with the kind of the finger claws he's got going on um a little little less so but you know anywhere you can draw blood um so like we have this kind of main juicing thing but i think there's probably other ways for him to to have the blood seep in uh all right so let me take a look at this gear again so we've got Basically, same gear across each of those. Fair enough. We got, and we'll come back. Um, as a as a point of reference, I know he hasn't done it yet, but can he uh, for the next version? Can he sketch out? Um, essentially, this is something we always do sort of late and go. Oh wait, let's factor that in. So, um, his weapon design, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to see how these hang. Um, because they're gonna hang in this like utility belt side of things. And I think you know when I think about his cross, uh, fun. Fun factoid um, when we were talking about sort of his cross. Um, where am I going? Hello. There we go. Uh, so we gave, so here he's got this kind of like, we have this, and we haven't designed it quite yet. So um, I'd love to see, we didn't get a version of the cross yet from him, right? No. Okay. So we yeah, so. Weapons a little separately, so. Yeah, totally. So he should just sketch out um, like a rough, a rough out of the, because it takes up quite a bit. I mean, I think taking this sort of as a design reference, I mean, this thing could, could sit on his back. Mm -hmm. um, it could sit on, hang on his side, but I think it's, it's almost the size, kind of like it's almost the size of a small buckler shield, right? So, um, so, and I think that I really want to see where that winds up um, hanging from his, his persona. So. Weapons in, in the Dr. Bosky universe are always, uh, they're always, uh, close at hand. So, um, okay. Just double checking, kind of coming back to, so that, uh, looking at the utility belt stuff kind of gave me, made me think of that. I also like, we have this little dangly skull thing on the side. That's pretty sweet. Um, so push that in there. I definitely like the gear. Let's take a look at what, what design do we like for this kind of shoulder strap and maybe this actually goes in with the collar and i really i like these like metal collar things that we got going on they're really doing it for me uh yeah um okay let's take a look again at the legs yeah, so we'll do that pant design. Got main, this main cod piece thing going on here into the belt. That's okay. Oh, we got the fang daggers too, right? That was the other piece. So yes. yeah, so I think we, we need to gear them up just, just in just rough outs. So for space. All right. So then, all right. So that kind of gives me a presence of what I think things are going to happen along with the torso. So now let me take a look at the faces again. All right. Hello, faces. And the the darker lines represent a lot more. Um, those That was scarring or was that tattoos? I forget. Hmm. I think it was scarring. Sorry, it was scarring and tattoos. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like the idea that some of the scarring um, and transformations, like there, there might be some subtext there where um, basically, you know, he's trying not to lose himself, right? He's trying, it's the typical story of like, you know, becoming evil to fight evil. But if you just become evil, what makes it any different? Like, you know, at one point, where do you lose all of your, your heroes, and, you know, your, hero, your, your heroism, right? Um, so I like the idea of it, that, that, um, leaning into some of these changes that have happened also created this like tattooing. So I, I let's keep going on that idea. I like that. Um,
I think it's going to break up his flesh too, which is nice. Uh, I, it's got kind of that eye thing going on there, huh? Let's take a look. So what do I like out of the heads here? Hmm. So I think so he's got a version without the, the fangs, which are pretty cool. So I like the element that he's got with the, the forehead and the, the tattoo lines as well. So that's good. Uh, we're probably a little too much tattooing around the eyes. So um, let's pull back on that. Okay. And then also with eyes. So let's have him do a, a set of eyes. Um, looking for a little bit more cat-like. They're, they're not too bad. Uh, these, are, these kind of also fall a little bit into the DBK style, I think. Oh, look, he's got these versions here. A little too alien, but I like when he, he like when he's juicing up. I like the idea that it, maybe his, uh, his pupils and irises just kind of flush would be pretty cool. Maybe with a, a red uh, or a emerald green, something like that. So, hmm. All right, let's, let's drop the, uh, the extended jaw mouth thing. I thought I was... I don't, I, it's not going to work as, as much as I like it. I thought it would, so. All right. Um, I would like to keep a little bit here. So let's seal up the cheek, right? Um, and then let's, let's try another version where uh, he's got just these four, these four fangs. And these fangs are probably, these are things that come, up, that come out during the juice so that he doesn't generally walk around like that. The juice. All right. All right, I think, guys, let's take a look at these collars real quick. So I've got, so I like, we got the wrap thing going on. I definitely like, I like that back collar, back collar, the wrap, wrap. So let's, let's try to, um, let's have, let's do a riff on, um, essentially what we'd consider like the blood bag, right? So let's see if we can turn this, um, this clasp, uh, that we have it kind of like in general that what we've got going on, but let's turn this clasp into something that, that this, um, that basically that the, uh, I know the, the IV can plug into. So it's almost like, you know, he had, he's basically got on tap. It's shape of a blood bag, a little bit more um, rectangular. And then let's make it look a little bit more uh, you know, like it's, it's ready to receive, essentially being just plugged into, uh, into you know, his basically his intravenous. Um, all right. And what, what was the feedback on? Let me take a look at this again. Do we do any feedback on the on the basically the neck? No. Okay. Hmm. Just trying to figure out whether I, I like the these kind of like weird twining and appendages. Uh, let's ask Dimitri what he was thinking with these almost like look like nodules that plug into like a, a like a wiring of, you know, like how how essentially the vamp blood gets circulated into his body. I mean, if that's the case, I want to explore what these little nodules look like a little bit more. But um, we can we can go with this version for now. OK. All right. Let's take a look at his his. Uh, I think his his lower section. So we got nothing here, nothing here. And the real question is, do we, do we want to keep these things? Mm. Let's go ahead and, and drop the, uh, let's drop the, the, um, uh, I don't know, the, the, 
what is it, the dress here? The lower cloak. Drop the lower cloak. Yeah, yeah. I think I like him better with with it uh, with it not exposed or with I like seeing the legs being exposed. I think especially when we open up these um, the the cross section, it'll um, it'll accentuate a bit more of the um, I think just the way his body's transformed. So it'll give the 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 like extra pair of legs um, time to breathe. So let me ask you, Zay, how are you feeling about these extra legs? I like them. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I, I want to see a couple of, I want to see, we'll, we'll do a version because this is one of those things where the mutation, um, this is something that happens that they're more likely to happen as he, you know, as he's gotten older. So, but I don't think that they hang around all the time. I think he can pass with these right. things being essentially absorbed into the back of his legs. So it'll be interesting. We'll see the back designs for how, um, like how the flesh might be changed a little bit, but um, it you know he should generally look like a like a human from the backside. So, okay. All right. So, what am I missing? There's just a couple more design elements that I'm missing. So let's see. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let's just take a look. So we got the we got the boots in the bottom. What about these knees? So we like the I like the these I liked, uh, this boot design for sure. And what about the okay, so we got the skull for the other piece. Okay, so any remaining feedback. So I got my heads, got the, the mouth pieces. Got the neat cowl thing, which is cool. We got this uh, torso wrap, which I definitely like. We're gonna explore the pant material. We're gonna have the scarring, which is good. Yeah, this is a good exploration. I like the direction we're going. I agree. All right, let me pack this up and send it over to you. All right, and then do we have anything else that we're gonna review? He did do a render of Salzon's pistol. Ooh, okay. All right, let me send this over to you real quick. Okay, and then I'm going to stop the recording here so we can do Salzon's fruit pistol um, as a side piece. Ha, <laughs> piece, piece. <laughs> All right. Uh, and if you made it this far, uh, thanks for hanging out and uh, we'll see you next time.